The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. And we pray together. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all the sad men, and from whom our secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we sing a hymn. Christine chose very, very nice hymns, but I had to change them at the last time. So we go with what we have in these computers. Neil and we have sung Jesus is the Lamb of God and we look upon him, we trust in him. When we come to the presence of God, we don't come because we are good, because we are trying to, but because he has made us able to bring our lives, our prayers before God through his forgiveness. His cleansing love, He has cleansed us from all our sins. But we are reminded to ask God of the forgiveness of our sins regularly because we keep sinning. 
So we bring our life before him with this prayer together. We say, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you, against our fellow men, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray the collect for this Sunday. Really is a collect from past Thursday when we celebrated Ascension Day. Yes? And we today are taking the reading for Ascension Day. So we pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to receive see that according to his promise he abides with his church on earth even to the end of the ages through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit my god now and so amen we're having a reading now the reading from acts chapter 1 verses 1 to 11. Acts chapters 1 to 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period sorry, a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gifts my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with the water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before the very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intentionally up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has, taken, who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Those are the words of the Lord. Now we read Psalm 47. More than reading it, it's a song, so we, we use it to praise God also. On Zoom it's very difficult to do this, but here the psalm says, clap your hands. Shout to God with the cries of joy, with cries of joy. Wow. Who knows when cries of joy? No? 
And we just read it, but then we don't do what the psalm says. So that's, we may try a little bit. And uh, we are not going to shout, don't worry. But it does, the psalm calls us to involve with everything what we are with, with our bodies, with our song, with our shout, with our emotions before God. If you may stand, we sing this, we proclaim this song. Clap your hands, all the nations. Shout of joy with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God. Sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises, for God is the King of all the earth. Sing to Him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on His holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of high Abraham, for the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This psalm comes in this time of ascension, when we see, we are reminded what happened in the middle of history, as we believe is something that happened in history, that Jesus died, but then was risen. In the same way, the same readers, the same gospel writers tell us that Jesus went up. It's a moment, a moment that happened in history. He went up in the clouds, showing us that he is king over everything. And that's why this psalm is in this time of the year. Proclaim him the king of the nations. He is the king of all the earth. And when we found Argentina uh, winning the cup at the end of, of the past year, we said, wow, we are champions, Argentina is the champion of the world, and everyone was celebrating. And they, they were not just the little ones that clap and shout. They were men, I'm not sure you, but you look very serious. But I went to Cabildo and, and went to clap. Well, Sometimes this psalm could have been read to us when we were very little with songs and shouting and doing things and then we go growing old and the psalm is just for the little ones. No. As everyone shouted for Argentina, more or más razón, every one of us should be praising God with all our heart no matter what age we have. I don't mean that we shall need to clap or shout, but we have something really, really great to serve, to proclaim, to worship. And it's Jesus. Jesus, the King of Kings. And we, we are before Him now. We will read, we will hear now, you may see, one more reading from Ephesians chapter 1. Alec. Yes. It speaks about the greatness of Jesus and where we are with him. How we are with him. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. Thanksgiving and prayer. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Remembering you in my prayers, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may now know him better. I pray also the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted 
Christ, which he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of, his, of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand for one more hymn.
We have the gospel reading I read it here, and then Greg will share with us. Okay. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Luke. Glory to Christ, our Savior. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written, the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had left them out to the vicinity, sorry, when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple praising God. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ. Amen. Please be seated and we ask Greg if he may guide us with this, this virtual sermon. A ver, just a minute, Greg. Now the the important, the important we're getting echo. Yes, just a minute. Uh, now the, the important question is and i'd be very grateful if somebody could uh, respond to the question not just can you hear me can you hear me clearly very good in that case let us pray heavenly father we thank you that we can meet in your presence Thank you that you are with us wherever we are at the present moment. And you want us not just to draw close to you as you draw close to us. You want us to hear your voice and you want us to understand what you're saying to us. Just as you open the understanding of your disciples on that day of the ascension. We ask that you will open our understanding now, that we might hear, understand, and believe. We ask it to your glory and in the name of Jesus. Amen. As Hernan pointed out earlier on in the service, what we're considering is about historical facts. What the gospel presents to us is history and it's very important to get that clear. One of the hallmarks of St. Luke's gospel and the Acts of the Apostle, which he, of the Apostles, which he also wrote, is that as he tells us, he was giving his readers an account of the things that have happened. And another key phrase that Luke uses is the phrase, I witnesses. As he was preparing 
his account of the life and ministry, death, resurrection, and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. He sought people who could bear witness to the fact that these things really happened. And we have to remember that, especially in these strange days that we are living in. The early Christians, the apostles and many others died because they refused to say that what they were preaching about didn't happen. It's completely irrational to think that many of the apostles and others died cruel deaths because they refused to deny that Jesus Christ died, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven in a practical, material way. Therefore, you and I now need to take time today as we consider these words to say, do we believe this? Do we not just believe it's a story which helps us and which we find interesting and helpful, but this really happened. Interesting, when I was young, there were two basic positions among the people that I was studying with. They either believed it or they didn't believe it. If they believed it, then it changed everything. If they didn't believe it, then they took it to mean some spiritual, allegorical um, teaching. And they would say, it doesn't matter whether it's true or not. What matters is what we learn from it. That was how things were throughout much of the 20th century. That liberal tendency got much stronger in the times following the uh, publication of the book by Charles Darwin in 1859, The Origin of the Species, when a lot of people felt there was a conflict between scientific truth and spiritual truth. Now, we don't see that contradiction, but at that time it wasn't easy. And people like Arnold, Dr. Arnold of uh, Rugby College, made dramatic statements when he said things like, miracles don't happen, miracles didn't happen. And then they sought to interpret the Christian message as we find it in the pages of the Bible, especially the New Testament, as if it was some kind of allegory or spiritual myth. Now we are living in a time not of liberalism or orthodox belief. We're living in a period which has been called post-truth. What does that mean? It means nowadays it doesn't matter whether it's true or not. What you have to express, and you might do it on Facebook, is whether you like it or not. What is your opinion of it. And in a sense, many people say, well, what does it matter? What does it matter? And the truth is, it matters very much indeed. It matters very much indeed, because if Jesus really was the Son of God, if he came from heaven to earth, and if he came to fulfill the purpose which the Bible says he came to fulfill, it changes everything. What was the purpose of Christ's coming? Well, here, in these words from the last part of St. Luke's Gospel, we find Jesus's last words. And we know that he could pronounce his last words because he had finished what he came 
to do. He would never have left had he not completed it. You remember his words on the cross before giving up the spirit. It is finished. That means he had done what he came to do. What did he come to do? He had come to die on the cross. And having died on the cross, and to, in a sense, vindicate everything that happened, God brought him back to life. And then he ascended into heaven. That happened literally. In the words just before what Enan read to us, the disciples see Jesus suddenly appearing in the upper room and they don't believe. They think it's a ghost, it's a spirit. And he says, touch me, feel me. I'm really here. That is not a hallucination. That is not some attempt to teach some wonderful, deep spiritual truth with uh, uh, a picture or some kind of myth, allegory. It is reality. And how does Jesus substantiate it? He eats with them. There's something very real about somebody eating fish and chips. There's something extremely real about what Jesus does. He takes fish and he eats it. And then he confronts the very thing that the disciples had been able to understand or believe, the reality and the truth of his death. You remember if there was one thing the disciples couldn't get at all, it was whenever Jesus spoke about his death. And St. Peter even went so far as to say, no, that can't happen. And Christ had to say, get thee behind me, Satan. This is the very meaning of Christ coming into the world, to die on the cross. What does he do now? Well, we heard the words just now. He opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. What do you and I need in order to understand what God has revealed in his word? We need God to open our eyes. And I want to invite all of you sharing this moment with me on this in this celebration of the ascension to take time with God to ask him to help you to understand. As you read God's word, ask him to do for you what he did for these disciples in the upper room on the day of his ascension. Ask him to open your minds so that you can understand. And what do you need to understand? What is written? that the Christ will suffer. Why did the Christ suffer? Why did Jesus die that terrible death? He died in order to satisfy God's love, God's justice, and God's holiness. And because his death on the cross met all those requirements, he was able to say, it is finished. And as he shouted those words, it is finished, what happened? The curtain which divided God's holy presence from the people was torn from top to bottom. Now, there is no barrier between those who believe in Christ and a holy God. We can draw near to him and he draws near to us because we haven't just been forgiven our sins. We have been justified. We've been made God's children. And that is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say, this will be preached in his name to all nations. That is the purpose 
of the church. That's why there is a church. The church is there to proclaim a message of salvation. And then Jesus says to them, you are witnesses of these things. We come back to the fact that Christians are talking about something which is true. We're not just talking about our opinion. We're not just sharing what we happen to be interested in and what we like. We are witnesses to truth that is true for everyone. We want everybody to come to a place where they move out of darkness into light, where they move out of death into life, and where they know not only that they have been reconciled to God, but they have eternal life. But then he says, wait. Wait until what? Wait until you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. If there's another thing the church needs to recapture in these days, it's the need for us to know the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I need not just the life of the Holy Spirit in me. I need Jesus to fill me over and over again with the Holy Spirit. The tense which we find for this, this, these expressions in the New Testament is to go on constantly being filled. When he says, be filled with the Spirit, he means go on being filled. It's not a one-off. It's not something that happened just once on the day of Pentecost. And we will be clothed with power. And then Jesus took them out to Bethany. That was where Lazarus and Martha and Mary lived, about 40 minutes walk from the temple in Jerusalem. And there, physically, he was taken up into heaven because he had completed all he came to do. Now it's up to us to tell others. And they returned to Jerusalem. How? With great joy. Our message isn't just one of truth, isn't just one of faith and belief. It's a message of great joy. And let's seek to know God and let's seek the fullness of the Holy Spirit so that our joy will be a part of our witness to this wonderful truth. So let's take time as we consider and celebrate once again the ascension and as we prepare for the celebration of Pentecost in a week's time. Let's take time not just to read and to seek to understand these things but to experience them and to live them so that we can be witnesses to this wonderful message of joy and hope. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you, Greg, for sharing with us. Let us stand and proclaim our faith, what we believe, and what brings us joy, as Greg said. Not just a belief, but what brings us true joy from God, because he's king, and he's, he loves us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, 
we believe in there we are. my Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. One being as a father to be more for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. We came to him and come to the Virgin Mary and the Most Holy Man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he seated by the land. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, and he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated or kneel. Moment of prayer. You have received a sheet, a little leaflet. When you enter, do you all have this leaflet? Yes? It's part of the campaign, Thy Kingdom Come. That's throughout, it's joining many churches around the world, praying from the Ascension Day to Pentecost Day. We are praying 10 days of prayer, asking two things. Lord, we want to believe in the fullness of your Holy Spirit. So we pray for ourselves to live in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And then we pray for others that don't know Jesus. Five, specifically, we, the, the proposal is that we have five people in mind with whom we are related, with whom we talk, we, with whom we, to whom we serve, whatever. People whom God has put around us in order that we may show his love to them. So that's it. Five people. Maybe it's too many. Uh, maybe there are just a few, whatever, but if you may write them when you go back to home five, and there's a proposal on how to pray for them uh, uh, on the other side of the sheet. But just this, let us pray now. Yes? Lord, we give you thanks for your mercy, for your love, for the church here. Thank you that we are able to meet here in this place and also join with those who are at home. Thank you that, although it's hard sometimes with all the technology and everything we, we have enjoyed, your word, we have received the message for us, and Lord, this message that came down from Jesus, then from the apostles and through centuries to us. Now we receive. Now we believe. And we want to live it out. We want to live in the fullness of your spirit. Please fill your church with the power of the Holy Spirit. Fill us. And we humbly pray that we may be filled, that your Spirit may en enable us to live as Jesus lived, with joy, with love, with gentleness, with patience, with all, with all the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, and that the Church may show forth your love in this way to the world. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for five, five who are loved but to us, but before everything they are loved by God, that they may have their eyes opened and their understanding opened, 
to the love of Christ in the cross. As he opened the eyes of the disciples and the understanding, the understanding of the disciples, that the understanding of our friends and families and others, what we are praying for may be opened and open our mouth to share with them your gospel, Lord. Bring before God these five people, if you may, pray for a while for them. That's personal, each of one has different people, but as we pray, we know we are praying for 75 people in this moment who don't know Christ. And Lord, it's not just a good desire. And a, or a hope, we really pray to you, Lord, because you have the power to bring the blind to sight, those who are dead to life, as you have done with us. So we pray that they may believe and help us to, if we are the ones that may help them, that we may share with them your gospel. Merciful Father, accept this press for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand, please? We will share the peace.